Well, extemporaneous monologue is storytelling, just like people tell stories everywhere. It's the um, act of storytelling itself is actually the way in which human beings construct narrative, like the way we understand who we are is because we tell stories to ourselves about who, who it is we are. And in the performances, what I do is I take complex narratives and I perform them live on stage. So there's no script and they're not memorized. Instead, every night they are created again from an outline live uh, with the audience and for the audience. And the effort then is to dissolve the boundaries between myself and the audience so that we can have as deep and rich an experience as uh, people do when they tell stories uh, all the time. Um, where do I get my inspiration? Uh, years ago, I captured a small boy and I keep him in a locked room uh, back in New York and periodically I torture him and it's uh, no I'm just kidding I, I, I this is the question of where your inspiration comes from um, is always such a tricky one for everyone uh, and it's impossible to answer you know really but the truth is that the monologues are born out of the desire to um, collide different things and so I look for the things I'm obsessed with, and I pursue those obsessions, and then I try to um, uh, uh, create pieces that I think are evocative and necessary, that are about the things that I feel like we're not talking about, that we should be talking about. Well, I think we're fixated on the material because it fills a need in us for things. We love things uh, because they're awesome. You know, uh, objects are awesome. Uh, the camera, which is filming me right now, that makes it possible for this interview to be recorded is awesome. The, the tools that allow us to get through our day are awesome. The things that uh, allow this whole universe to exist, you know, they're, 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 really, they're really awesome. And um, so we feel this lust for them. We want them and we keep them at the same time. Um, we're fundamentally unfulfilled. And that also is the state of just being alive. Human beings are, are usually unfulfilled. And so um, we uh, hunger for the material because, uh, you know, it, that's, the, that's, that's what fills the universe for us. And so we want more things. And the, the, the irony is that the more things we get, generally, uh, the more things we want. The people of Cork are fascinating. I mean, people everywhere are really interesting. The people here are, um, you know, it's interesting because they're very, um, they're, they're an interesting mixture of being very, very, um, they're very lyrical and they love to sing and they're very open uh, emotionally. They're quick to cry and they're quick to uh, anger. They're quick to many, you know, their emotions are very open at the same time. Um, 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 they're very solid. They're very solid people. And so it's been really interesting, you know, delving into their stories, talking to people. And, um, you know, doing a show like this gives you a fantastic mandate to go and ask people, you know, tell me about where you live. Tell me about the place you live in. And one of the purposes of the show, both the working on it and then in its execution, is to provide a mirror so that people can look into that mirror and see themselves, not because I have rendered them so artfully, but because honestly, when we live in a place, we don't always think about ourselves that much. Like we become invisible to ourselves because we're moving through day after day. And so I see my job as an outsider is to be the one who comes from outside with that mirror in an effort to, um, to reflect back things that actually might be very ordinary, but, um, but when they're when they're seen again for the first time, become extraordinary. And so um, it's gone very, very well. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, to talking to people about it.